How did you make enough money to be able to afford this car? Right decisions. My budget were, you know, a couple million bucks or something to try to get into a into a hotel. How would you do that if, if you were just starting? Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough money now to do that. I'm but screwed. What's up, guys? So we're down at Rancho Santa Fe, California at Cars and Coffee. We're going to talk to some supercar owners on how do they actually make their money. We're going to do a quick video. Let's get right into it. Hey, so what's your name? My name's Joshua. Awesome. What kind of car you got here? Here I have the 23 GT3. What kind of business are you in? I'm in property development and then uh, my uh, kind of passion business is um, a group that I run called Fast Lane Drive with my partner. How did you make enough money to be able to afford this car? Right decisions, you know, that's that's the main thing. There's no really one right, you know, answer. Everyone's different. I kind of just made the right decisions along the way of where the locations were going to be, uh, what I had in mind for you know, the apartment buildings that I wanted to build, I kind of wanted to give like a condo lifestyle, mm. which that wasn't here yet in San Diego. Yeah. So when uh, when we did that, uh, yeah, it just worked. Somebody wanted to get into that, like how would they get into doing what you do? Like yeah, let's I mean, say they're young, 20s, and yeah. they're just starting out. Get a loan, go borrow some money. Um, if you've got a friends, family, that are, you know, got some deep pockets, try to get a money loan from them. That's that's my first suggestion. How much can you make on a really good year if you're you know, a couple years in? Well, it depends on, you know, what, what you have. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're looking at a commercial real estate, that's not what I'm really in. I'm in res residential, but commercial, I mean, you could be making anywhere. And it depends how many units are in the spot, right? Yeah. So it can be anywhere from you know, a couple hundred thousand to a couple million. Yeah. What advice would you have for young people trying to kind of like figure out what to do and come up and make money so they can afford something like this? Follow your passion, but make sure that passion is going to give you something in return. I think there's too much of like, oh, I'm going to, you know, be in agriculture or something like that. And you're really thinking about what you're planning on doing. Just just random stuff like that. You know, really think about what you want to do and, and go for it. You don't have to go to college. I mean, there's a lot of business trades that you can do, a lot of trade, you know, just in general. So Yeah, I'm 100% a fan of following your passion, trying yeah. to figure out things that actually feed you, right. give you energy back, as opposed right. to like taking the job that your folks say you should yeah, have. Yeah, and it sucks the energy from you. Yeah, super sick. Well, we can't wait to follow you on the rally. Awesome. I think we're going to check that out and awesome. uh, share that with the crew. So, Perfect. Yeah, thanks so much. Hey, how's it going? What's your name? Sean. What kind of car do you have today? Uh, McLaren 620R. What's that car worth, roughly? Now? I mean, there's only three for sale, so 350 to four, depending on spec. What kind of line of work are you in? Attorney. How much money can you make as an attorney, kind of on an annual basis, to be able to afford a car like this? About the same. Yeah. A little yeah. more. What type of law do you practice? Just... I do uh, business and construction law. Okay. I have my own company. It's U.S. construction law. So that's how I make money. But before, when I was an associate, you don't make anything. Work so, for someone else. Yeah. There's no way I could afford that. I've always had cars, but more like BMWs and M3s and stuff like that. Yeah. So. You know, graduated, went to law school, mm -hmm. paid off your debt, mm -hmm. started making money. Mm -hmm. So did you start making money and then you bought the car or you waited? Like, how long did you wait till you could afford this? So this is my third McLaren. I own three of them. So I have a 570 track pack. That was like the first one. I also have a Can-Am race car. I started making money for a while. Always buy the house first. Always have a bunch of cash just in case like something bad happens. Always have at least a, you know, at least a year of cash to live on. I usually do two. And then once that built up, I was like, all right, well maybe I want to go into something more exotic than BMWs. How do you enjoy this car right oh, now? Oh, this is the best, man. I mean, it's on stock wheels right now because I got it back from the dealer, but I have it on Senna wheels. This is a baby Senna. I mean, yeah, it has all the aero like. in the front. It yeah. has aero in the back. All the uprights are Senna. Like, it's got center locks, all the stuff, so. It fits me very well for what I like to do. I like to drive like a complete maniac. Fun fact is no one knows this, like, because they never, McLaren never marketed this car. Hmm. They didn't do any of the press releases. They didn't give you any of the information. No one knows what this car is, so it's like super undervalued. Yeah. They only made 225 in the world because COVID hit. They were supposed to make 350. Wow. There's no data on it, right? So what's interesting is, so like 577, 2600, any of those things, they're all built by McLaren. They could be MSO'd and configured or whatever. Even LTs are cooled, you know what I mean? But even in their literature, they say an LT is a you know street car with performance. This is a track car. So this car is actually built by the GT4 racing team. It's okay. completely built by a different spot. Wow. It's funny because if you look at the firewall, there's still a sticker on the back that says MSO goes to a different spot. Wow. Yeah, so this car, like when you start it, literally the, the mirror is shaking. Everything is shaking because it's all solid mounted out. I mean, it's you know it's got full aero. Yeah, let's check it out real quick. It's filthy after some trap or uh, some canyon stuff. Yeah, well, I think that's good advice for young people too. I mean, that's I think what you're sharing is like work for someone as soon as you can. Work for yourself if you can. Take the risk. It's interesting is I left. I ran an insurance company before, and then I had so many clients that were just telling me to go away. And then uh, at that point, it just kind of built itself. And I did it as a lark, like really. So it was more of uh, we'll see if this works. If it works, and it's been 10 years now. So.
thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Sure. What's your name? Bob. Bob. What kind of car do you have here? Uh, Corvette Zero One, 2019. So what do you do with this car? Just daily drive. Yeah. I can't go to the track because I'm too tall with a helmet. So yeah, just drive it around town, whatever. Yeah, it's beautiful. So Bob, what do you do for work? I'm retired. So what did you do for work? I was uh, in finance. What type of finance did you do? Uh, just personal stuff. How did you like that line of work? I loved it. What can you make a year in finance? Like depending on, obviously there's a range, but it what's depends typical? depends on what you put into it. So if somebody was just starting out or like maybe a couple years into finance, like the type of stuff you did, what, what could they expect to make income wise? I don't know, maybe 80,000 a year, something like that. Okay. All right. Perfect. Well, thanks so much. Appreciate right. your time. You're it's welcome. a beautiful car. My name is Lynn Ferrar. Wonderful. What kind of car do you have here? Got a 1998 uh, 550 Marinello, the Euro model. Got about 50,000 miles on it. Uh, owned it since uh, 2002. How did you choose this car? I've owned Ferraris since 1977 and, uh, you know, put it together enough money to buy one. What kind of work were you in or, or are you in right now? Uh, uh, hospitality and hotel and resorts. Mm. Did you focus on flagged resorts or were more boutique stuff? What type Bo of stuff did you do? Boutique, uh, individual ownership, hotel. Do, are you still working? Are you retired now? I'm retired. Yeah. How did you get into that business? Well, I have an economics degree from Colorado. Mm -hmm. And were you a buff? Uh, started, I am. Love it. Uh, Solid. <laughs> yeah, my brother went there, so yeah, it's a great school. And actually went into real estate to start with and uh, ran into a, a nice recession coming right out of school and kind of switched over to hospitality and restaurants and then into hotels. Speaking of recession, going into a recession right now, what did you learn from the recession that you experienced and like what advice would you have for young people that are trying to figure out what to do in a recession? Don't build up any credit card debt. So. Preserve your cash. Don't get caught up in the uh, interest rate spiral of paying 27% on your credit card. It'll kill you. Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but credit card debt just hit an all-time high. I think we're close to a trillion in credit card debt. It's really ballooned since post-financial kind of assistance during the pandemic. Now we've seen people try to keep pace with inflation with credit cards, so it's it's a big challenge. Yeah, it's not going to work. You see banks putting the reserves aside. They know defaults are coming. It's going to be an ugly six to 12 months. I agree. Even though if you've got some extra cash, you might uh, come spring, the stock market might start paying off for you. How do you get into your business? Like if people want to get into hospitality, do, do you like the industry? Did you do you think it's a good business for young people? It's got its ups and, ups and downs, as uh, everybody has seen, but it can make a lot of money if you're in a good good cycle. Uh, you can lose a lot of money in a bad cycle. So it's been a lot of fun. What did you guys do to create unique client experiences? Because I know experience is such a, an important part of hospitality. How did you guys manage that? What were things that you guys did to create something special and memorable? Every day you've got to come to work with a fresh set of eyes and see it like others would see it and then look for ways to improve it. And some people like to uh, give service and others find it beneath them, if, you know, not enthusiastic about it. But it's really rewarding if you provide somebody with more than they expected. And that's how earn mobile five-star ratings is to work on doing that every day in every way through your whole team that, that everybody dedicated to make it better today than it was yesterday. Yeah, I've come to believe in this kind of concept of under promise over deliver, which is what you're alluding to, it sounds like. Did you find like trying to find the right staff uh, was super important just to be able to deliver on that oh, yeah. client experience? Yeah, that's uh, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you can develop them. Sometimes, uh, you know, they just appear. But if you can challenge them to do better, then they will. Let's just say I wanted to get in the hotel business because I, I have some aspirations around that. What would be the best way to get started? Like, would you buy an existing older property? Let's just say my budget were, you know, a couple million bucks or something to try to get into a into a hotel. How would you do that if, if you were just starting? Unfortunately, that's not going to be enough money now <laughs> to do that. I'm but screwed. <laughs> to do the little uh, bed and breakfast in kind of component, it depends on, on your debt. But, you know, you can do that with three or four people and provide a great experience. But you're going to really work and work hard. Find a spot that has a few rooms and maybe really go to work on the food and beverage side to create a, a destination restaurant uh, culinary experience. Then, you know, you could, you could probably make a go of it and have a good life, too. Yeah, that seems to be super important, right? I think modern hospitality, especially the boutiques, the ones that focus on that food and beverage experience seem to do better, especially if you can create that that unique kind of iconic feel. Do you guys do much stuff in the wellness space? Were you focused on wellness at all or not? Was that more of like a newer thing, would you say? Uh, no, I got involved in that in early in the 80s, uh, created a spa. I was doing a lot of yoga, mm. uh, Pilates, uh, incorporated all of that early into the 
experience. Yeah. Well, hey, thanks so much. Really appreciate you being generous with your time. Yeah. Wonderful Welcome. insights. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. So we just wrapped up Cars and Coffee in Rancho Santa Fe. Weather was funky today, so we really struggled to get a couple good interviews. There's a couple funny ones in there. I hope you enjoyed it. For sure, hit that subscribe button. We'll be dropping another one soon. Thanks so much.